Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Chris here. I want to bring you guys a little update on Bitcoin and we're going to look at it on the weekly. And I think that's where we're probably going to stay. We might get into the daily a little bit, but mostly going to focus on the weekly here. Seeing some things that are exciting, but we have to have continued follow through for them to happen. So I wanted to bring this to you. If you could like, subscribe, all that guys, that's awesome. I really just uh, I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. So what we're looking at here is something that I find significant that the MACD is setting itself up. We are kissing right here. We're so close to a crossover. And guys, we have not had a crossover on the weekly here for real. Down here, we did a little bit of kissing. Now we've just been moving sideways. But since January 22nd, we have been underneath. And you can see the bend we had before, but we've been underneath, underneath. And typically when you've been underneath for that long, if you can break up there and we can get some good volume, we can make a nice little move and we'd have some momentum. You can also see the histogram. Look how long it's been in the negative on the weekly now. See this, guys, how it's just been going down like that. And we're trying to get that flip to the positive side. And you can see that little hook that we have here. Guys, the, the more hook, the better. Like if this one here, how we hooked and went up, that would have been nice, but we didn't have the volume here. We got to see if we can get over top of it and then if we can hold it or if it's going to go back to kiss and we'll just see. But really keep your eye on that MACD. I think it's something that's really important. Next thing we're going to look at here. So take a look at these lower highs, guys. Right here. So we start with this high. Then we came down here. Came up right here. Another one. Another one. Right there. And guys, what we're looking to see happen here, as the week continues, you can kind of see the volume been slowing down just a little bit here. But I don't think we're going to get over top of this 8,500. You can look at the daily chart and you can see it's not going to happen here. So what we have to do, we have to set another lower high. Then we have to get another higher low. And you can see that from here. So here was our bottom. Then just by a little bit, we had a higher low here after we came up. Came back down, higher low, that's good. Now we'll have that lower high, higher low, we get into the equilibrium and we're going to have to look for the break. Either a break to the upside or the downside, but it's nice to see that we did get this higher low right here. That was really important. Wasn't by a ton, guys. Let's see. So that was 57.26. And that was 58.55, so right in that range. So that's really important, guys. We want to keep an eye out on that, okay? So look for that equilibrium. Next thing we're going to look at here is the moving averages. So clearly the moving averages have been down, guys. I want to get some of this off here for us. They've been acting as overhead resistance. You can see right here how they've just been acting as that resistance and pushing us down. Each time we get up there, that's that bull trap, and then you get pushed back down. Another one, bull trap, push back down. So we want to see if we can get over top of those. So be really big if this week, say we could even get a close over the 20 EMA here in green. If we could come up a little bit more, get a nice solid close in between there. Obviously, we've got to look for some volume. But when you look at these things on, on the weekly and step back, it gives you so much more perspective. Like after this run, guys, if you could see this candle, it'd still save you from some downside. This was a bearish engulfing candle of this right here. And then we got pushed down. So say you even waited for this to confirm the next day. Was it 69.03? And it dropped down to 6,011. You could still save yourself a lot of money just by identifying these things. So we want the moving averages to flatten out. We got to close on top of them, turn them into support. That's a big deal, but you can see that higher low that formed here. So it's almost like could we potentially be having that out of this right here, you know, a one and then our two, since it didn't go lower than this here, and then could that three wave be coming up to test 10,000? Obviously, you're going to have pullbacks in there, guys, but if the serious volume came in like we're looking for, some good news, ETF news in September, something like that, we could have that equilibrium and, and break up. But we have overhead resistance here, you know, that we're going to have to get through where we'll go up, have some pullbacks, cool off periods, and then continue to run. But we've seen some positive signs so far. We've went through a few things here, guys. 50 moving average right there overhead. And a lot of times you'll get kind of drawn to those. They act like magnets, just like you can see along here. We get up here and then we'd fall, come back up, always wanting to touch it or test it. 
So keep that in mind. Then, guys, let's check out the 200-day moving average here. I think it's important we look at it on the longer time frame, see where that's at. It's not giving it up right now. Let's go to the 100. All right. So 100, we do have a support. And that's at 51.92. So if we do see a bearish break, guys, that definitely could be a spot that we could go back and test. But we definitely don't want that because we'd lose those higher lows that we established right here. If we come back down, not good. So we're okay to set a, a lower high, but we got to keep the higher low intact. All right, guys. Next thing, let's look at, let's go with the RSI. See how that's looking on the weekly here? You guys tell me what you've been doing. Buying, and selling. It's been your strategy. Hodling. You just changed the color, guys, so we can see a little bit better. All right, so even there, have a little bit of that upward momentum. And we're above the 40, which is important. We want to stay above that. We don't want to get trapped underneath that and be bouncing off it. But this RSI, guys, is going to have to get over this top right here around 52. Or so that's going to be some some pretty heavy overhead resistance and we'll have to see what we do with it and i'm sure that'd probably get us to that 85 like right in here that'd be the equipment 86 if we could break out through that past 85 86 guys then we would have that 10,000. so those are the overhead resistances i mean we're we're there guys we just need that big volume to come in and, and you know it, it happens so fast you can see it back here when it comes in, it comes in real fast. You just have to be able to capitalize on it. We don't know what's going to come in. Next thing, let's check our Bollinger Bands. See what we're looking like on the weekly. It's just cool to look at some of these things on the weekly, guys. Middle bands acting as overhead resistance here, so that'd be an important thing to close over top of, kind of right in the middle. Remember, guys, each time when you usually touch the bottom there, you'll have a nice little run at least up to that middle band there. You can see it there. Then we came back. We did not test the bottom here, didn't touch it. But really pay attention to your Bollinger Bands. I think they're a good indi indicator for you. And remember when they tighten, you're looking for that break. When they widen, you have all that volatility. And then let's look at the macro Fibonacci quick, guys. Now get out of your hair here. I just wanted to bring this to you. I think it's important to look at stuff on the weekly. Let's turn our magnet. All right, we'll go from there. Give us a good representation. So guys, we're flowing between uh, the 786 and the 618. So we're right in that range. So overhead resistance as well, we're going to have that 618 that we have to break through, and that's at 7902. So that's going to be some overhead resistance. All these things you have to factor in, guys. And right now we have declining bullish volume. That, that needs to pick up. We don't want to see it going down. We want to see it going up. It's a big deal in a bull market or start of a bull market change in trend that you have that increasing bullish volume. Really pay attention to the volume. The next thing, let's take it this way as well. Go about right there. All right, guys, now the weekly. This is a hard one to get above is the 236. Another overhead resistance right there. And that's at 8,876. So that's a little bit above those tweezer tops we basically almost had. Okay. So there's those guys. Then I also just wanted you to look at this so you know for the future. Guys, my phone's running. One second. And for the future here, guys, you can wait that week and be patient, but do you see this massive bearish engulfing candle of this right here? That signified the run was over, guys. RSI was over 90 at that point. And once this candle confirmed, that basically told the story for what was going to happen here, this type of fall that we were going to have. So keep all these things in mind, guys. God bless each and every one of you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We'll see if the volume can pick up, see if we keep moving work. Excuse me, we're at 69.63. God bless each and every one of you.